All right, in a previous video, I showed how to work with or how to concatenate or, or basically get the data from a multi-select field, including multi-select person fields, in a SharePoint list in Power Automate for the purpose of sending an email or various other uh, scenarios. Uh, in this case, I want to show kind of how to do that um, instead of on a specific item in a list, but for all of the items in a list or for a select set of items from a list. So in this case, I have a list called escape plans. Uh, each escape plan has a title, has a one or more team members assigned to it or working on it, has a columns for planning status and execution status. And basically what I want to do is set up a flow that will run once a day and send an email, a single email per escape plan to all of the team members who are working on that plan to let them know what the, you know, what the state of it is, what the current planning status is, for example. Uh, so in order to do that, I need to set up a uh, recurring flow. So I'm going to jump over to Power Automate here and I'm going to click New Flow and select Scheduled Cloud Flow. And I'll call this daily plan update and set it to run once a day. We're going to change the timing in when we actually create the flow. So I'll click create. And whenever you're using these recurrence triggers, it's important because they to understand that by default, it will run uh, whatever time you select is going to be based on Pacific US time. Uh, so you want to actually crack open the advanced options here and make sure that the time zone is set to your local time. In my case, that is Eastern time, U.S. and Canada. And then I'm going to say at these particular hours, let's say 7 a.m. And you'll notice these are 24 hour, you know, you go from 0 to 23. So it is, um, you know, 24 hour time. So 7 will be 7 a.m. if I wanted to be 7 p.m. I would select 19. So I could actually have it send at 7 a.m. and p.m. if I want, but or I should say run, but I'm just going to say 7 for right now. All right, so that takes care of setting up our trigger. Uh, next thing I want to do is do uh, use a get items action. So get items from SharePoint and point it at our uh, escape plan, which is in the communication site. The list name is escape plans. And that's all I need to do here. Now you'll you may notice that there's a little red dot on the flow checker and if I hit save here uh, the flow checker is going to warn us that get updating get items to use an OData filter can improve the performance of your flow. I'm not going to show how to do that here but just understand that is something that is important to know. Uh, when you are you whenever you use this get items action in Power Automate, by default it will get all of the items of that list, actually the first hundred items of the list, um, which can be inefficient. So if you are working with a particular set of items from a list, so those which are of a certain status or um, created in a certain time frame, whatever the case may be, uh, learn how to use the OData filters, um, the filter query field here um, in Power Automate and it will help you write more efficient running flows or build flows that run more efficiently. We're not worrying about that here today, just know that is something you want to think about especially when you're running this against a, a list of hundreds or more items. Alright, so let's just first add a compose step here in here so we can see what the output of that get items is going to look like and for that I'm going to choose from get items the value and it'll be list of items. So I hit save and that flow checker error is going to keep popping up so we'll just have to deal with that. So I'm going to say manually run this flow. One of the great things about using a recurring the recurrence trigger is that in addition to it running at that scheduled time, you can also manually trigger it whenever you need to just to verify that it's working the way you expect it to work. Or when you're in the process of building a flow, you can just kind of run it to make sure it does what you want. 
All right, so now we can see our get items. If I view the outputs, ugh, that's kind of ugly. And if I view that in the compose field here, we can see what that actually looks like in JSON format. So just like pretty much everything else in Power Automate, this data is being returned from that SharePoint action in JSON format. So we can see that, and in this case, the inputs and outputs are the same because the compose action is just rendering that output from the previous step. But we can see that the inputs are in an array. We know that it's an array because of that square bracket, because that is the indicator in JSON that what's following this is an array of data. Now, if I scroll down a little bit, we'll see this is the first item, first object in that array. So we'll see it's got an ID of one, it's got a title, it's got team members, and hey, there's that square bracket again, indicating that what's in this team members field, uh, which is that multi-select person field, is also an array. So we have an array within an array. Uh, but in reality, what we want to do is, is build a, you know, compile the email addresses for each of these team members um, for each value or each item in the array that's returned so that we can send that email to just those folks for that particular item or that particular plan. But we are working with a an array within an array scenario and then within this array it is an array of objects because each object, each person object has all of these fields. It has a OData type, claims, display name, email, picture, department, and job title. Uh, so really what I want to pull out of there is the email and we're gonna that's that's where we're going with this so all right so let's edit our flow here okay so when we want to basically pull out those team members from each of the uh, plans so what I'm going to do here is add another compose action and let me just name these so I keep them st straight. So let's rename this compose, get items output, and name this one plan team members. So now what I need to do here is select the team members and what you'll notice is that it throws that inside this apply to each. And it needs to do that because what's being returned here, this get items, even if only one item is returned, it's still going to treat it as an array because that's the format of the data that comes back from the get items action. In our case, it is legitimately two items. It could be two or 10 or whatever, but the point is that it needs to apply to this apply to each loop to iterate over each of those items. So what it's going to do is basically return the plan team members for each plan in that list. So if I save this and we run a quick test, we will see that it's successful. So when I open this apply to each, that compose plan team members here are the team members for the first plan and then the second cycle will be the team members for the second plan so pretty straightforward stuff so far so let's now edit this now within this apply to each so we know that this is returning the team members for that plan and if I hover over the value here we'll see that the value that at that apply to each is working with is the body of each item returned from get items, which is good. Uh, that's exactly what we want because we're also going to want to extract things like the value, the title value of that item. Uh, but now let's let's turn our attention back to this person field, this multi-select person field. So we're, it's returning the team members, and what we want to do is extract just their email addresses and we're going to do that again with the as I did in the other video with the select action now as I showed in the other video you can do this either with a string variable and append values or you can use select select is is generally speaking a bit more efficient uh, and if you use the 
the, if you're using a variable, um, first off, it needs to append to that variable inside of another loop. So you have apply to each inside of apply to each. That's one kind of one knock against it. Uh, and then also you need to then, um, because you would be reusing that variable consecutively or, or for each cycle of the, 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 this apply to each loop, you need to clear that variable. So this is another reason or kind of another benefit of using select is that because you're not putting this data anywhere, you're just extracting it on the fly, you don't need to worry about clearing out that variable later. So again, from here, I'm going to say I want from the output of this compose plan team members, I want to again switch this to text mode and in here I want to select team members email. Oh, and it did that again. Don't know why it does that. Sometimes it threw it into an apply to each, but I can drag it out of there. And if we just hit save and test this again, we will be able to take a look at the output of that select and ensure that it is returning what we want it to return. And that is returning just those email addresses. So if it does throw that second action or the, the select action inside it and apply to each, just drag it out. It's a little wonky that sometimes it does that and sometimes it doesn't because literally two minutes ago I did that and it didn't uh, throw it into a loop. So we're going to change, rename this to select emails. And then finally I can use a join action or data operation and say from that select output I want to join. Join basically takes the items in an array and appends them or concatenates them together with some separator. So I'm going to say join with a semicolon because that is what Outlook wants in terms of a, a email address separator. You may also be able to use a comma, but semicolon is a little more certain. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to just add another compose here so that we can see what the output of actually no, we don't need a second compose because we'll be able to view the output of that join for each of these iterations. So I'm going to hit save. And again, we're getting warned about that get items, but we'll let it slide. And let's test this again. So now when this is done running, we will see that for our first item, our first plan, what we have as the output of that is those, well, we can see the input is the array format. So square block, square bracket, indicating array, commas, all that. Uh, joining each of those items or each of those uh, entries with a semicolon. So now we have first email, semicolon, second email, and if I scroll across, semicolon, and third email. So that's exactly what we want. We can then take that and, you know, if I wanted to plug this into a an email, so let's say we use the generic send an email notification, I can, in the to field, drop in the output of join and say this is a test message. And then in here are, say, update four. Now, in this case, I want to get the title because that is the title of the plan and say, you know, this plans current status is and then we can select planning status value hit save 
test and test that again. So the end result is that we're going, since we have two plans, it's going to send two emails. Um, okay, it had an issue with, uh, apparently that send email action failed. Let me just try that with a, this is the first time I'm trying to use mail in my dev tenant, so let me just delete, oh, actually add a new action. We'll use the, we'll use the Outlook send email action instead. Send an email. All right. And in this case, we can just copy, paste. Well, and here, this is again going to be the output of join. And then planning status, now let's say current. Planning status is, and let's delete this since we no longer need that. Save it and test this again. And flow is successful. So now we can see that for the first project, our first uh, plan, so update for tunnel under north fence, it's going to send an email. This plan's current planning status is in development uh, to those three team members that are assigned to it. And if I look at the next one, we'll see that it is. When it finishes loading here, there we go. Uh, sending an up update for a zip line, and it says this is under review. So that is basically what we need to do to essentially cycle through a list of items, so multiple items returned from a SharePoint list. Um, and within each of those, there is a single column, which is a multi-select person field. You compile those. Uh, the emails of those users into a single string using select and join and then send an email using Outlook. So hopefully that all makes sense. Um, it can, as I said, it can get a little tricky when you're doing specifically that select emails because even here you saw that it, it wanted to throw that inside of another apply to each, uh, but it doesn't always do that and I'm still not entirely sure why Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't, but your mileage may vary. If it does, just simply drag the select option or select action outside of the um, apply to each. But you do need to make sure that what you're selecting in the map field here is team members email, not just team members. Uh, because if you select team members, then it absolutely is treating that as, a, as an object in an array. So it's going to, you can't, won't be able to drag it out of there. It does need to be a specific property of the object that's in that array. So in this case, the email. So hopefully that's helpful. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below.